Good afternoon, everyone. It feels a great pleasure for me to be here on the stage of this hall, my second home debut, four years after my graduation. Today, I'm going to talk to you about our school building mission in Nepal, which is aimed at paying back to the society and paying back to the nation as a whole. My dear friends, when I was the student of APU, I knew that the motto of this university was save your world. But you know, it sounded too big to me because I never knew what my world is. And if I do not know what my world is, how can I save it? However, my stay at APU and the learning that I had in this campus has a profound impact on what me and my team are doing at the moment and what we aspire to do in the future. Let me take back to you, Nepal. This is the map of my country. Administratively, this country is divided into 75 districts. Before we graduate from the junior high school, we need to take a nationwide examination. This examination is called School Leading Certificate Examination or SLC in short. If you don't pass this examination, you cannot advance to your further studies. So in this view, this examination is regarded as the iron gate. The pass percentage of the students is about 20 percentage. In order to pass this examination, one has to obtain 32 out of total of 100 marks which is not that hard if you attend your school regularly. And then if you have a look at the past questions for the last two or three years, it's not going to be a big joke. But not even 20% of the students have been passing in some of the districts. And the one that you can see in the map with the red mark is called Kotan. This is the district which, according to the data of 2015, obtained the pass percentage of only 16.5 percent is far below everyone's expectation. And within this district, there are many schools where the result is nil almost every year. Out of those schools, I'm going to talk to you about this one because this is the school where my friend, who stayed with me for a long time, studied during his childhood. He's actually the founder of the organization that I'm working with. In the year 2011, 70 students appeared for that SLC examination, and none of them could make it. The villagers, they wanted to be, build a better school, but they did not have enough economic capacity. They appealed for help to my friend, who was also from the village. The local people had collected around 100,000 Nepalese rupees, and then they wanted my friend to help build a better school in that community. And that is what my friend shared with me. I was so much moved by his passion, and I said, we need to do something. From that very day, both of us allocated 5,000 rupees each in order to build the school. We, we expanded our network, we spread our wings, we talked about our ideas to as many of our friends as possible. And by the end of the year 2012, our effort could lead us to collect about 200,000 rupees more. And with a total of 300,000 Nepalese rupees, we built this bamboo made school. As you can see in the picture, this is a school made up of bamboo. Why did we choose bamboo? Because it was one of the easily available local resources. I'm talking to you about the place where it's very hard to buy the bricks where there is no electricity, where there is no water, where there is no telephone. And in that part of the world, we built a school made up of bamboo. The team of the school was, the roof of the school was made up of tin. And in an even 
red ochre or wind blew, it used to produce a big sound, and then class could be obstructed. There was a small toilet, and we lacked almost all the things basically required to run a school. But we never lost our hope. We thought of building a better school one day. At that time, we had one teacher and 10 students. And you know, when our teacher used to walk up and down the hill two times in a day, some people used to doubt, and they used to ask the teacher, can it be a school with one teacher and 10 students? We never got offended. Thanks to that teacher, who was a female, she was a female teacher in a male-dominated society. No matter how much she was criticized, no matter how much she was questioned, she believed in our dreams. She helped us. We went to talk to people. We carried out Nepal night events. We, we organized charity barbecues. We, made, we went and made presentations about our ideas in several occasions. We went, we went to meet with representatives from different NGOs and NPOs who are actually working in the developing countries. We even took a night bus from Tokyo to Osaka to meet the guy you can see on the picture who has built 75 schools in Nepal. Our hope was to make our school bigger and better every time, every day. Finally, we could garner the support from all of our well-wishers. By the year 2013, we could replace that old bamboo made school with this concrete building. And to build this school, it took us about one and a half years time, and we spent around 6.5 million Nepalese rupees. For that society, this is not just a building, it's a symbol of hope. We did the opening ceremony of our school in April this year. The number of teachers in our school increased from 1 to 10. Most of them are women. And we, got, we have been running the school until grade 5 right now. And our hope is that we upgrade the class by a, a class each every year, so that by the year 2022, we turn this school into a high school. The number of students increased from 10 to 138. And then these children, they have to walk about 10 kilometers a day. They have to climb up the mountain for 5 kilometers and climb down the mountain for another 5 kilometers. But they come to study at our school. You might ask me, there are so many schools in Nepal, and why this guy is talking about the school that their NPO built? In that remote part where there is scarcity, where there is lack of so many opportunities, we are building a school where the education is provided entirely in English for the first time in their history. Apart from providing education in English, we create the curriculum in such a way that our students get to learn about music, dance. They learn to be engaged in some creative projects. It's not only that. By utilizing our network, which we made during our university life, we have been sending the volunteers from different corners of the world to teach at our school. These volunteers, they do not only take classes for our students, they also train our teachers in order to make the study environment better and more conducive. The presence of the volunteers alone has a bigger impact on the perception of the local people. And this has been helping us to maintain a healthy relationship between the local community and our school. Our students, for the first time in their life and for the first time in the history of this place, have been involved in later exchange events with the students from other countries. They have been experiencing the cultures of other countries. In addition to that, we also import several aspects of the Japanese education system where we pursue our highest studies. This is something which is absent in almost all the schools of Nepal. Our students, as you can see in the picture, that put the red hats and 
they are taking the risk. They risk. This is something we imported from the Japanese system. We involve our students in cleaning their stuff. We believe that if the students learn to clean their desk, if they learn to clean their classrooms and the school premise, that will build in them a feeling of self-responsibility. As you can see, the name itself said, if you and me work together, we can do something. And you may in Japanese means dream, right? This is the this is the school which carries our hopes and dreams. This school we believe is a platform where the students from different facets of the Nepal society can gather, they can learn together, they can explore their potentials, then they can learn to build their dreams. Right now, we just have built one, one school, but this is not all that we want to do. This is just the beginning. I feel that it's too early for me to explore my, to expose and express my future plan or our future plan, but our five-year plan is very clear. When there will be Tokyo Olympics in 2020, we would have built five more schools, making a total of six. And by 2020, we will be trying to impact on the lives, lives of 6,000 children across different corners of Nepal. In addition to that, we will have built you may house in the periphery and vicinity of the capital city. This would be the house where the children, a few selected, a few meritorious students who never had an opportunity to go to school, go to a better school, would gather, would share their dreams. And we believe that these would be the children who would carry in with them the message of paying back to their societies in the future. Again, you might be asking me a question. Why do we have to build the schools? Is it compulsory? Or is it something directed by your desire? My answer is both. But firstly, it's because of our desire. And then, where did that desire come from? This desire came from our realization of what me and my friend, the founders, went through in life. Let me share our stories with you. I'm from a very remote place in the western part of the country. And my friend is from a remote village in the eastern part of the country. It takes about 28 hours by bus to get to my place. The literacy rate of those places is far below 30 or 40 percent. But at the age of 10, both of us were selected to be the full scholarship student who studied in one of the finest schools of the country. This is the school which has been established by the British government in collaboration with the Nepalese government in 1972. In this school, we studied there for about nine years, staying in the hostel. We used to get dressed for free. And we even used to get allowance, travel allowance to get back to our house during the vacation. In this school, we met with friends from different corners, different backgrounds. And then it is in this school where we learn the deeper insights about our own societies, the deeper insights about our own countries. We realize that education really matters. While this has been a story of me and my friend, the educational reality in Nepal is far beyond your imagination. There, the education, in basically in the education system in Nepal, there are two kinds of schools. The first one is the private school, and the second one is public school system. Private schools are limited only in big cities. Those who go to private schools, they pass the examinations like SOC examinations very easily. But not all the students can get to the private schools owing to their economic conditions. Then what do the other students do? They have no choice, but they have to go to the government on public schools. There are about 35,000 public schools around the country. And 
out of that number, only 5,000 schools got libraries, many of them limited just in the names. The course books do not miss to these schools on time. Teachers do not follow the time, and there is no proper system to regulate, regulate this kind of flaws. Other infrastructures are lacking. Use of computers is beyond our imagination. There are no labs, no other facilities. So, what do we expect out of this kind of? What do we expect out of the students who pursue their education in this kind of schools? Obviously, they fail. And then, what do they do when they fail? Again, they have no option. But. They are demoralized. They do not want to continue studying in these schools because they have to wait for another year to take the examinations and there is no guarantee that they can pass in the second year if nothing changes in the environment. So they start looking for new jobs. They start looking for job opportunities in the neighboring countries. And India is perceived to be an easy prey. People have been choosing to go to so many Arabian countries that have been choosing to go to Malaysia as cheap laborers. On average, 1,700 youth leave the country on a daily basis. They work for 7 days in a week, 30 days in a month, and almost like 365 days in a year, merely to earn, about, merely to earn a monthly income of about 20 or 25,000 at least rupees. So this is the reality of most of the youth of my country. But we believe we can at least help in educating their children. And with that sheer passion, we said, let us start some initiative with our capacity, with our ideas. And then that is where the concept of building schools with our own ideas emerged. And the mission of our school, uh, the mission of our school building purpose is to pay back to Nepal. My appeal to everyone in this hall is, if you think that you have not understood your purpose in life, if you think that you cannot see the better side of your life, I invite each and every one of you to go and visit our school. If you go and talk to our children, if you go and, talk, if you go and see the suffering of the people living in that part of the world, I'm pretty sure you'll be finding your purpose in life. By saying this, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you very much.